Welcome to the West Hearts College podcast series, The Industry in Isolation. Each week we'll be speaking to various professionals across the creative industries to answer student questions and to find out what the secret is to their success. With us today is Olivia Gavigan. Last year, Olivia completed the Extended Diploma in Performing Arts Musical Theatre Pathway with us at West Hearts College. And after successfully auditioning for drama schools, she received a place on the BA Musical Theatre course at Bird Academy of Performing Arts. She's kindly agreed to speak to us about what it's like training at a drama school right now. I also have a guest host with me today. Evie Lilly is a current student on the Musical Theatre Programme at West Hearts College who is looking to apply to drama school next year. So, Liv, you're at Bird College. I am. Hi. <laughs> um, what is your typical day like at Bird? Um, they're quite intense. They're mm. very, very, yeah, quite intense. Um, we normally have about two to three dance classes a day and then some singing and some acting and some lectures. I don't have that many lectures. I have like two, I think, a week. No, three. Three lectures a week. Um, so, yeah, it's ma mainly, mostly the practical side. Um, of everything that's kind of the day in there. Cool and what dance styles do you do in those dance classes? Uh, we do ballet, we have three ballet classes a week, Yeah. Uh, two jazz classes, one commercial jazz class, two tap classes and two contemporary classes. Wow so you cover a lot. Yeah it's quite it's quite varied. <laughs> yeah. And how long typically is your day? Um, so most days is 8.30 to 6.45. Two of the days we finish 5.15, others 6.45. But we have, I do have quite a lot of breaks. So it's not like it's intense 8.30 to 6.45. Like on Mondays, I have two one-hour breaks or two God, hour and a half breaks or something like that. So the hours are long, but the actual classes I'm doing isn't that intense for that long of a period of time. Um, and what else do you study in the curriculum other than dance? So we have musical theatre technique, mm -hmm. um, acting technique, ensemble singing, individual singing, which we have a half an hour lesson every two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, what do I have? I have music theory lessons once a week. Um, we do lectures. So last term I did a dance science lecture and I had to write an essay on that. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had history of performing arts since September and we're writing an essay on that at the moment. Um, what do I have? Oh, we have singing tech as well. The anatomy of the voice and how it works and how um, to use it effectively to improve your singing. Auditions that we've had to prepare for. Um, so in the first time we had legit songs and we had to choose one out of four that they gave us. So in our individual lessons, we would just mainly work on that and how to improve that and get the notes and whatever. Um, so... I guess I would kind of be improving my technique at the same time because my singing teacher would give me exercises. That, okay, this is how you're going to work on this bit. Um, so I would go away and do those exercises. So I'm kind of improving my technique at the same time as putting in a song, which is helpful. Mm. Um, and the song, to be fair, not adding too much to our rep at the moment because it's just the songs that they've given us. Yeah. And so second year, when we do other assessments, we'll have to pick our own songs, which will actually go in our rep. Um, so yeah, it's more just I much more technique based. Than mm. That's cool. And what are you working on at the moment? Or um, the last one? Last one was oh we we would just got a list of songs for our singing assessment. Uh, we could choose one from like I think that's twenty two to choose from. Um, so I was looking at Wait a Bit from Just So. Oh nice. Um, yeah, that's a good song. Or Into the Future from Vanities. Oh nice. That's a really nice tune. Yeah, um, yeah, those are the two I've been looking at, but I've got so much time I might work on all of them. <laughs> Not build that rep as you go. Oh, and we have workshop as well. Um, so the first year, half of the year, I did a musical theatre workshop um, where there was a group of us from different classes and the teacher, um, we learnt some songs and then we did dance to those songs basically and at the end we showed the whole year kind of thing. And at the moment I was meant to be doing dance workshop which is much more student-based. So kind of we are meant to make up the storyline and the dances as much as we can. 
Um, obviously, I was meant to be doing that now, but you know, with everything going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have accents. Accents yeah. is great. I'm learning American at the moment. It's actually much harder than you think it is. There's so much more you've got to think about. Um, yeah. And acting through song as well. Um, that's 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 a good class. Okay, I think that's everything now. <laughs> I love Belinda's jazz. Belinda's one of my teachers. Her jazz is, is very up tempo and very. She's just she's just one of those mad teachers that just gets so into it. And she's, she's, half the time she's like in the middle of us and we're like, where's she gone? <laughs> Trying to love the dance. Oh. Um, so either her classes or my commercial classes. The commercial <laughs> teachers are so good. Um, yeah, they're they're probably my favorite classes. What is the difference between studying at college and studying at drama school? I think the main difference is the intensity of it, the intensity of the classes and the long days and everything. Because obviously at college, it was only kind of three days a week, whereas now it's like five days a week all the time. Um, like it becomes your whole life, which obviously is a good thing. Um, I'd say that's the main thing. And um, yeah, no, that that's like the main difference for me. How have you developed this year as a former? My understanding of my technique in everything so my dance technique and although it might not be improving as much as I'd hoped it to I understand it better so I'm able to improve more because it's much more um student-based work than I realized Mm -hmm. so in all of my dance classes it's a lot about me focusing on what I'm doing wrong and me correcting myself um which is really hard because a lot of the time you're just like I just want someone to tell me what I'm doing wrong yeah like okay but that's not the point because once I figure out what I'm doing wrong and correct it I become um, a smarter dancer and a smarter singer and I know how to then improve um so yeah I think the thing that's improved most with me is my understanding of everything like singing acting dancing everything you've danced pretty much your whole life haven't you yeah exactly so so now it's like finally sort of understanding you understanding your body the technique and all that yeah because Um, from september they took us completely back to the beginning yeah we were doing plies for like an hour and i was like what is going on but now um but it makes you think like i went through a stage i was like i've never known all my life i've been doing plies wrong how is this even possible yeah and everyone like what i i don't know how to dance and everyone goes oh my god i can't dance (laughs) crazy because I guess you're all in the same boat you've probably all been dancing all your life um but strip back to the basics and yeah yeah, it's been so helpful going back to the beginning and realizing actually this is what it's meant to be not the way you're doing it what would you say your expectations of training at drama school were and have they have you met those expectations I would say I, I had the highest expectations and almost like the worst expectations I thought I was going to be there 8.30 to 6.45 every day with half an hour break and all the teachers would be shouting all the time and everyone was going to be better than me and I was going to be rubbish and I, I this is what I thought it was and then I went and I actually realised it's it, it's not actually that bad. Um, obviously the intensity is not as crazy as I thought it was because honestly if it was I don't think anyone would survive. <laughs> yeah and the teachers, you do have the teachers which are like really... The, the, there's something else you, you go into the lesson scared but that's just how it is that's the way of teaching um, yeah. but it's the fact that you realise everyone's kind of on the same level and obviously there's people better there's people at the same but you're all kind of in the same boat yeah so I kind of I prepared myself for the worst and then when I went I realised okay it's actually not as bad I'm actually really enjoying myself <laughs> so technically you didn't meet your expectations because I'm guessing in a way it's, it's better than what you thought it was going to be yeah it, yeah m- much obviously I I expect it to be really good but I expected it to be like hard and focused all the time and ah and it's strict and traditional but actually it's not no it's yeah it's not that's nice that's really good um and what's it like living away from home oh I love it <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie I think it's great because I've always I've I've always been really independent yeah um so for me to live away by myself, I, I find it great. I've got my space. I can do what I want when I want. So now at the moment, coming back and having to eat when everyone else is eating and eat what they're eating and not make what I want to make and not have my own space is weird. Yeah, I can imagine. I'm not used to this. Like most of my flatmates, you just, they're like, oh, I can't wait to go home. Can't wait to go home. I'm like, yeah, it'd be great to see my family. But I am cool living by myself <laughs> because yeah. I am so independent in that way. 
and you know you do get times you're like oh, I miss my family I want to go home cool. and I do and then I'll go home for a weekend and it's fine because I can't everyone does it um but most of the time it's thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> Good. I'm good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, And how do you balance training all day and still have the time to experience uni and live the uni life? It is hard. Yeah. Um, You you don't get the full uni lifestyle that you get at uni, obviously, because because of the intensity and the long hours. So your social time is mainly restricted to the weekend. Obviously, like I've I've gone out for dinner after college or I've gone to see my friends so you do have that time um and it's not like college is your life and that's it and you don't do anything else it's not like that at all either we go out we we socialize we do all those things um it's just not to the extent that you would kind of at uni of course because also you as a your your cause is physical you've got to look after yeah. your body and everything you can't yeah. be around boozing all the time yeah um, <laughs> So, of course, that is still part of the uni life. So, um, I'm glad you're still getting to do that. Um, but what would what has been the biggest change in your life this year? Um, biggest change. Like, do you feel like you've grown up more? Do you feel more independent, more so than you thought you already were? Um, yeah, I think I think I've grown up more and become more mature and like understanding about the world and all that kind of thing. Um, I think not living at home has definitely like made that difference. Um, but yeah, I definitely think I've yeah grown up more. I yeah, that's strange. Yeah, and were you nervous about when like joining drama school and starting something new? Um, and has that changed? Oh, I was I was so nervous. I was like pooping my pants. <laughs> 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 I I was really one of those that I went in as. I was afraid that I wasn't going to find any friends. I was expecting that I was going to be the worst one in the class and feeling like I'm rubbish all the time. Um, And it just wasn't like that at all because I didn't realise that everyone is in the same boat. Yeah. Completely. And so you're going in and nobody has friends. Nobody's, you know, nobody expects anything. Nobody knows what to expect. So you go in and you make your friends. And there were people that I was friends with at the beginning that I'm not now, but that's just kind of part of... The journey really um just finding like a path and who your real friends are um that that was really the main thing for me because I've always kind of had that um that nervousness about making friends at a new place so to live somewhere else and be completely different and no no one it was really daunting but um it was quick within the first within the first couple of days I was like I don't know what I was worrying about that was ridiculous <laughs> Of course, but I guess, you're, like you say, everyone's in the same boat and it's just one of those things that you have just got to go in it alone, but you end up coming out with it yeah. like with different friends, exactly. which is so lovely. Yeah. Exactly. Um, what did you gain from your BTEC course that's helped you at uni or drama school? Um, I think like an understanding of professionalism and sort of an introduction of how the industry works and how um, like classes would work in drama school um and sort of that college kind of gave me that independence of learning um obviously not to the fullest extent because you know you're like 16 you can't really but um yeah just kind of a kind of right you've got to go and do this now kind of almost on your own yeah um which I think definitely helped me because you can tell there's some people that haven't had that um and they're kind of they don't really know what to do and they kind of rely on other people and kind of the understanding about the industry. Like there's some things that I know like, Oh, it's like this Mm. or things about like acting, for example, when they suggest, um, Stanislavski, I'm like, Mm. Oh yeah, I know how that is. I understand what you mean. There's some people saying they're like, I I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so it's things like that, that just makes me feel a bit more comfortable and I'm not confused all the time. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd say that's one of the main things. That's good. That's great. Um, What's one piece of advice that you would give to students looking at drama schools? Look at, uh, look at every way you can. Yeah. Don't box yourself off to, oh, I've wanted to go to this one since I was three years old, so I have to go to this one. Um, because from, I mean, it was different for me. I, I knew I wanted to go to Bird. I auditioned a Bird. Bird was still my favourite place. Yeah. Um, but for many people that I've spoken to, they 
you know, for example, Erdang could have been their number one choice for ages. You know, since I was 12, I wanted to go to Erdang. Mm. And then they auditioned at Erdang and went, oh, I actually don't like it. But they're so glad that they gave themselves the opportunity to audition for other places and explore other places to then realise, actually, this is the place for me. Because that's the only way you know where to go, mm. is just going there on the audition day and whether you feel comfortable or not. Everyone talks about this gut feeling. And I think, like, did I have that gut feeling? Did I? But I, I must have, because I still chose it and I'm still extremely happy and I don't, I couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. Yeah. But just explore everywhere that you can and don't overwhelm yourself and be like, don't close yourself off and think, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I'm not good enough for that place, so I'm not going to audition. Audition everywhere. The yeah. worst they can say, say no, and you've got all these other places that you can audition out as well. So, yeah, just put yourself out there. Yeah, I think that's a great piece of advice. Because um, we can't, in a way, we can't be picky in this industry. No. Um, that guy, that guy loves you. to drama school. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the, what is your drama school doing to help you continue training through this pandemic? So we've actually got online classes going at the moment. Um, it's kind of like a trial week at the moment, so we've only got two a day, kind of. Because um, before, like last week, we were like, we don't know what's going on, we're not getting any help. Um, but then they kind of, they were more, they communicated to more, that's the word. <laughs> um, and yeah, so this week we've got online classes. So I had a ballet class this morning. Yesterday I had a body con class and a musical theatre lecture. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're kind of going through that this week. And we're also getting sent emails about uh, like live Instagram classes we can do as well. Like from the principal, he's just like, oh, I would suggest these classes. So it's not kind of we have to find everything for ourselves. So even if it's not through Bird, they're still giving us ways to carry on performing and training. Um, yeah, if it, even if it's not through Bird themselves. Yeah, that's great. And how is it doing a ballet class, I'm assuming like in your lounge, um, no equipment? It must be crazy. Yeah, and because obviously most people have left all their kind of leotards and tights and ballet yeah, shoes and yeah. whatever all back down there. Um, so you just kind of have pictures of all of us in like leggings and t-shirts and sports bras and socks on with our chairs <laughs> doing ballet. It's really odd, but the teachers are really understanding. Yeah, of course. Um, so it's not going to be as strict as your average class. Of course it can't. Um mm. But they're really nice about it and they're like, just do what you can. If you don't have the space, just kind of, you can do this instead. Or if you move this way, you'll be able to do it properly, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite nice, really. I guess it's just making the best of a bad situation at the yeah. end of the day. Um, which is, I guess, what everyone is trying to do by working yeah. at home, yeah. online classes. Yeah. Um, and final question for you. What does the college do to help you prepare for when you're out in the industry um, after drama school um so we have um a bird agency Mm -hmm. and they at the beginning of the year they gave us a talk of what they do and what they do for us throughout the three years and um i think throughout three years they give us more talks about what the industry is and kind of who we should know in the industry um obviously because it's still our first year they're kind of not doing so much of that yet um (laughs) But we've been told that from second year, we get all of this information and they give us loads of opportunities as well. So I've had the opportunity to audition for um, Carousel, which was going to be put on at the Regents Open Air Theatre, just as a student placement. Yeah. Uh, so just the audition in itself was kind of a taster into the industry because it was with Drew McConey. Um, so that's like a massive thing so we're there in this small dance studio with Drew McConey we're like oh my god this is really weird I'm like a first year at college and I'm auditioning with Drew McConey <laughs> what's going on <laughs> um oh, yeah it's yeah it's amazing and they were also putting on a version of West Side Story um <laughs> college do it every year they don't they do different shows yeah the first and second years you have to be picked to audition in the first place um and they were rehearsing for that so obviously that was going to be like a full-scale show they were going to do it for two weeks down in a theater in wales um so that's you know like massive industry training you know professionalism how the industry works how a show would work um obviously they get 
loads more time to rehearse it but that's because we're at college every day anyway um but yeah there's so many things that kind of help us towards the industry and it's kind of spread out over three years so you don't go in and they tell you everything because a lot of, pe- a lot of students kind of expect they're like oh well I don't know this about the industry and I don't know that it's because we're first year so we're still training we've got so we've got another two and a half years yeah so if they tell us all now by the time we're in third year we're going to forget so they kind of like spread it out across the three years so by the time we leave we know exactly what's going on you know third years they have an agent showcase mm-hmm. um which they weren't able to do this year I don't know what they're gonna do I feel so bad for the third years I know don't it's horrible I know um but yeah they're they're, they're really good with kind of that thing that's great and obviously it, it does majorly suck for your current third years because they've lost half of their industry exposure yeah. um, because of this pandemic but hopefully things will be back to normal soon and you'll be back in September and you can carry on your training and get to that place in two years which is crazy and, uh, and, and apparently it goes so quick like even this first year has gone so quick. yeah it's already Easter which yeah. means I've had two terms I'm like, I, I feel like I've just started but yeah. I've, already, I've almost got one term left and then and then it's second year and second year will go so quickly because really you only have two years of full training yeah. because yeah. third year you're just performing you're just performing and getting yourself ready for the industry um like our third years they have they do a musical and they do a create piece um and then they have agent showcase and they're just showing them that like third year is just performance you don't really train in third year so you have two years to be at the standard you need to be mm-hmm. for the industry so it's really really intense and for it to go so quickly like this is like oh my god I'm gonna blink and I'm gonna graduate I don't know what's going on <laughs> no and obviously two years sounds like a long time um but it's really not it's, in the scheme really of things because you're not there all the time and then I know do you guys get half terms yes. no yeah you do yes. so you guys you get half terms and all of these like end of term breaks yeah. and by the end of it you're not in, in um, education for that long and you blink and you're already in your third year um, exactly. which is I know okay. but, uh, yeah. thank you very much for, for taking the time out to do this with your very busy busy schedule at the moment <laughs> <laughs> I hope they get your classes up and running it sounds really cool yeah yeah it's, great. it's weird but it's great because there's like 80 of us because they've done it in half of the year at the moment so this morning there's like 80 of us on um <laughs> class so you're just scrolling through zoom with so many faces um this has been really great not only myself but i'm sure people who are less looking to audition next year yeah. um this is great thank you so much that was helpful yeah and yeah and it's nice because obviously we're to, we're in the same position that she was in last year mm. and now she's on the school and especially because like we know her it, it's oh, yeah. nice it's not just a random person but, like we know her ability as well so exactly. it's nice to hear how someone like Liv is getting on the drama school what do you think for you just from hearing her then what was the most important thing just kind of hearing about the lifestyle at drama school because mm. it everyone thinks it's scary I've always thought it's scary my brother used to come home and tell us like horror stories and I was like oh god is this really what I want to do I do but it's (laughs) it's nice to hear that not all of it is horrible because Harris used to come back about stories with all the girls saying they hated it but um it's nice to hear that you're actually enjoying it and it's it's fun and you're not just getting a good training out of it but it sounds like you're getting great training (laughs) out of it um which is good well, I, I think it, I can't imagine going in every day of something going, yeah, today's great, today's great, today's great. I, that's too much happy. <laughs> too much, too much. Yeah. Uh, still got to be an element of realism within that. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. It was lovely, lovely to catch up with you, Liv. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye.